Paul Stanley and the heavy metal band Kiss made it big more than four decades ago. He's just put out a memoir called Face the Music, A Life Exposed. Stanley recently sat down with Anthony Mason for his first television interview. They talked about his ongoing feuds and finally getting into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Anthony, good morning. Good morning, Charlie. After 15 years of eligibility, Kiss finally was invited to join Rock's Mount Rushmore. But for the band's 62-year-old frontman, who I sat down with in his art studio, it still feels like a slap in the face. You're being inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Or indicted. <laughs> indicted? The Rock and Roll Hall of Fame is, is fluff. It's, it's a farce. It's like an Adams Family bar mitzvah. I mean... <laughs> I'm going to go, but um, let, let's not kid ourselves, you know. That's not the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. The Rock and Roll Hall of Fame is walking the streets. You don't see it as an honor. I see it as dubious. We are the bitter pill that they ultimately had to swallow because they don't like us. Uh -huh. And the only reason they're in, uh, inducting us is because they begin to look foolish at some point for not having us in. Despite six platinum albums in the 70s and 100 million records sold, KISS has often been dismissed by critics who couldn't get past the band's cartoonish makeup and theatrical pyrotechnics. And if it's bad reviews that got me here, you're in the house that bad reviews built. That house, a Beverly Hills mansion, sits in the hills above Los Angeles. It's certainly not the environment I grew up in. I was in the, the family room one day with my youngest, and I said, I grew up in an apartment this size. And he goes, why? The son of Jewish emigres, he was born Stanley Eisen in New York City with a deformed ear that made him deaf on the right side. What was it like living with that? Living with secrets, personal secrets, is incredibly painful. This lonely little kid who couldn't get a date, didn't know how to interact with people, couldn't hear, um, had learning issues in school, suddenly became, you know, sought after by women, envied by guys, sold millions of albums. You were very driven from mm. the beginning to succeed in this band. I think I was very driven, period. It was to compensate, mm -hmm. to make myself feel more worthy mm -hmm. um, by achieving things. My achievements now are my children, my wife, but it was a long road to get there. One of his oldest friends is bandmate Gene Simmons, with whom he founded KISS more than 40 years ago. Did you like him when you first met? No, I didn't like him at all. Um, there's days he annoys me now. <laughs> um, you know, the squeaky wheel gets the oil, so he's this guy who everybody sees as like this, this the brains behind KISS, which is, Really, what he is is the mouth behind Kiss. Um, yeah, I, I, I always tell people he lives two minutes away and I can see his ego from here. But he says they're now closer than ever. Stanley, however, rarely speaks with the band's other two original members, guitarist Ace Freely and drummer Peter Chris, who left in the 80s. Gene Simmons said they're not fit to wear the makeup anymore. Well, it's a great sound bite. Do you agree uh, with it? I agree that they don't belong in the band, and they don't belong in a position to represent the band. We were asked by the Hall of Fame to have the original members put on the makeup and play with us. We're not other bands. You can't just have guys get up there. We're not in blue jeans. We have a uniform that represents who we are. If the original lineup goes up for the sake of nostalgia, for the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, who I, I you know, scratch my head about in the first place, I run the risk of negatively impacting what I've spent 40 years doing. For old time's sake, one more time, you wouldn't want to do that? How many times have you been married? <laughs> Twice. How about for old time's sake, you go back and spend the night with your ex-wife? <laughs> That's the way you look at it. That's the way you look at it. You wouldn't make good music. <laughs> 
Wow, wow. <laughs> Anthony. It wasn't quite sure where he was going to go with that. Oh. Hey, don't you rank this as one of the great interviews you've it was, done? It was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. <laughs> I, the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame wants the original members to perform. They wanted the new members to perform. The solution is nobody's going to perform. <laughs> I know. When I first saw it, I thought, ooh, not so nice. But now I get the point he's making. Well, yeah. he, I, I like they it. want respect. Like That's I what they want. It. He's I get really it. really interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. He's had a fascinating life. And the yeah. book is a really good read. Very acute observations. Yep. Thank yeah. you, Anthony.